How you going guys, Tramp Free here and today I'm just sitting in my boat because I was just about to update my Hummingbird unit and then I thought to myself why not make a video for you guys about how to update your Hummingbird unit. Uh, there is two ways you can go about it. There's a way that they've always had which requires you going onto the Hummingbird website and you download the information onto the SD card. They've got, they tell you exactly what to do in their support menu. I think it's you go to the support menu, then you go down to software version or software update, and then you find your unit, you click on your unit, and then it comes up with directions of exactly how you download it in for that information onto your SD card. If you already know how to put stuff on SD cards, it's fine. If not, hey, these days you can always just YouTube it. And um, yeah, what I will do is I'll find a link, because there is a couple of blokes that um, have done a lot of hummingbird update videos and all that kind of stuff and I'll put one of their um, links of their videos of how I I found out how to do it with the SD card earlier when I when I had my other unit. What I'm doing today is I'm going to be using the Hummingbird's new app for your phone because I'm lucky enough to have Bluetooth on my unit. It's a Helix, Helix 9 Gen 2 model so I, I've got Bluetooth so I can use Hummingbird's new Fish Smart app I can download the information onto off the app straight onto my unit and update it that way, which is you know technology these days. It's crazy to come to think back in the day when I was going to school. I had to walk to a, a telephone booth and you know do one eight hundred reverse to ring someone if I didn't have um, forty cents on me. But now everyone's got a phone. Updates, technology is just going crazy, and it does make it a hell of a lot easier. So what we'll do first guys, before we um, Bluetooth our device and make sure that it is blue, like um, all connected by, via Bluetooth, is when you're doing any update on a Hummingbird unit, make sure that you reset everything to default setting. It's just something that they've, um, they prompt you to do with all updates. Obviously they've got their reasons and it's you know one of them things that's always a good idea to stick to um, their advice. So if you want to put stuff back to defaults, I'm sure you already know how to do it, but it's just by clicking your menu button twice, scrolling across to setup, coming down from setup, going down to the option where it says reset defaults, click on that, it says reset, restore defaults, and then say yes. And then there you have it, that's how you start off doing any update of your software on your Hummingbird units. And then you definitely know that you're basically going back to all your default setting for the manufacturer's settings. Is because I never use the the sounds when you're pressing buttons. I don't like having the sounds on. Use mic. So yeah, that's a biggie. Before you go to Bluetoothing, making sure it's um, connected via Bluetooth. Is yeah, before any software update, just make sure that you put your factory defaults back on just like I did then. So now we'll just go to setting up your Bluetooth and we'll do that now. So what we first need to do is we've got to make sure the Bluetooth is on and connected and the phone's connected to our head unit. So what we'll do, I'll just bring the camera in nice and close and then from there we can um, go step by step and it's a fairly easy process um, to do it's not very technical at all. It's um once you've done it once. It's yeah, it's pretty easy So from here, we'll just bring the camera in and we'll um, go step by step So we'll do that right now Okay guys, what we've got to do now is we've got to turn your fish finder on So I've already sort of sped up the process a bit and I've just got it on standby and I've already put it on simulation mode So it just cuts out a little bit of waiting time of the fish finder to um, turn on so yeah, you can have it on simulation mode. It, it's absolutely fine because you don't actually need the fish finder to be in normal operation. You just need it to be able to get to your menu button or your menu options and 
that's basically yeah, just on simulation. So once you have it on, press menu once, and once you've pressed menu once, it gives you a sub menu. Press it again, and then you come to your main menu screen. And it's just a matter of scrolling across to accessories. Once I've got to there, I can come down to phone Bluetooth. I can hit on that phone Bluetooth, just press scroll right, and that opens that option. Turn on my phone Bluetooth, and then I'll just leave it on that screen for a second, and it's just a matter of turning on the Bluetooth on my phone. So once I've got my phone up, I don't know if the camera's gonna be picking that up well or not. It's just my Bluetooth option, my, my Bluetooth icon, press that on, and then on the, the Fish Finder screen, a new option has appeared. It says connect to new phone. So once I've got that up, I click right, and then within the, it's just telling me within phone settings, turn Bluetooth on, keep Bluetooth settings menu open. This pop-up will close once the search has ended and has found. So I just press scan on my phone. And at the moment, my phone is just searching for available devices. And then it's obviously found my phone underneath, which is saying the Galaxy S6. So now I click on the phone and then it says pairing. <clears throat> and then on my phone, it's saying Bluetooth pairing request to the Helix 9 Chirp SIGPS. I say yes, okay. And then after that, and then it just says allow contacts, just allow, allow messages. And then that means that my messages and everything can um, come up onto the screen if I was out fishing and my phone rang or a message popped up. Once we have the Bluetooth connected on the head unit to the phone and we know that they're connected, we could just go back to the app, click on the Fish Smart app and what it brings up. So it's basically got me sitting in the boat where I live and then all the matter of the doing now is going up to our options bar and it comes up with waypoints, routes, tracks, maps, system and settings. But if we go into system, we can come up to select unit and it's saying the Helix 9 Chirp Mega SI GPS Gen 10 unit has got an available update. It's saying install version of what I've got on the unit at the moment is version 1.640 and the available update is version 1.900, which, and it tells you in brackets how many megabytes it is. So all we have to do is hit transfer. Do you want to continue? Estimated time of transfer is three minutes, 29 seconds, confirm. And then all we have to do is just collect if, uh, put it on where we want, internal storage, card slot one or two. So we're gonna go select internal storage. And then down the bottom, it's got cancel and transfer. We just click on transfer. And then it says transfer started. And it's saying just in the yellow writing on the right there, that it's transfers, transferring the data. And then down underneath the available update, we're in the yellow there. It's got a little bar that's filling up as we speak in the yellow. So I'm guessing 49 megabytes or 41.9 megabytes won't take a hell of a time. It said three point something minutes. So it's just basically sitting here and waiting for that to transfer what it needs to do. So I'll just leave it on now and I'll speed it up in the actual final edit. So you don't have to actually sit here for three minutes watching a bar go up. So there we have it. It's transferred the information. Once it's um, finishing updating, then turn your fish finder back on and it'll come up with a box saying, replace the software on this unit, will rest restore the factory default. So then once you've known you've done reset the defaults, press yes. And then it will say, do you want to abort the software update to version 1.9? In my case, no. I don't want to avoid it, so I'll um, scroll left, and then it gives you a little flashy screen with different colors saying it's updating the software. It's just saying leave the power on to the fish finder, which is doing now. And then we just wait until it powers itself back on. So I was just telling you, updating software, 
leave power on, just making making sure that you leave everything on. So yeah, and now it's stopped and it's restarting itself. It's coming back up with the logo for Hummingbird and then it's going through its normal startup loading process. Now it's got to where it always starts to and it's got menu. So I can press menu, I'll go to simulation again, click on it. And since you can hear the beeps and all that kind of stuff, you know that it's back in defaults because they've got the sound on for pressing and depressing buttons. And there we have it. We're back on track. And now we have just updated our Hummingbird unit. So it is a pretty easy process. Once you've done it once, of course, it, it is a lot easier. Yeah, so that's just how you use your Fish Smart app by Hummingbird to update your Hummingbird fish finders. But yeah, that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Other than that, cruise across to the subscribe button, click subscribe, and until um, next time, guys, go catch some fish.